I'm Dwayne Thomas from Visual Latin, a homeschool video curriculum. And today I'm answering a question that I get all the time from my students. What is with the Latin pronunciation? What is with the pronunciation of this language? There's basically two ways to pronounce it. There's classical Latin and there is ecclesiastical Latin, which some people call church Latin. There's another one called English pronunciation too, which I'll talk about in just a minute. But first let's talk about the, the two big ones, classical pronunciation and ecclesiastical pronunciation. I put the alphabet on the board and I want you to notice there are two different colors going on. There are orange letters and there are white letters. The orange letters basically are pronounced the same and behave well. Look, B says B as in bumblebee and D says D as in dinosaur. Incidentally, which dinosaur could jump higher than a house? All of them. Houses don't jump. So let's look at the letters that cause problems because everybody gets tripped up over these two different pronunciations, ecclesiastical or classical. And you know what? Really, it's just a few letters. It's C, G, J, V, and W. And I honestly shouldn't have even put W on the board because the Romans didn't have W. So we'll just get rid of W. So now we're down to four letters that cause problems when you're pronouncing Latin. C. In classical Latin, C is always hard. So if I wanted to talk about Julius Caesar, for example, I'd say Julius Caesar or Julius Caesar. Kaiser. Julius Kaiser. Julius Kaiser. In classical Latin, G is always hard. So I have the, the word here for queen in Latin. In classical Latin, that would be regina, regina. In classical Latin, the J is always pronounced as a Y, a Y sound, Y as in Y as in yuck, or Y as in Julius. And by the way, in ecclesiastical Latin, it's the same. You would say Julius. You wouldn't say Julius Caesar. You'd say Julius Caesar. And you actually wouldn't say Caesar, but we'll get to that in a minute. And then V is pronounced as a W. So when Caesar defeated an enemy, he sent back a note to Rome, a short note to Rome saying that he had won. And the note, of course, you know, was Vini or Weeny, Weedy, Weeki. That's classical pronunciation. Weeny, Weedy, Weeki. I came, I saw, I conquered. Weeny, Weedy, Weeki. That's basically it. Y and Z don't show up too much in Roman words, but they show up in Greek words a lot. So, that, so I added them in our alphabet here. But classical Latin is basically regular pronunciation of all these letters, except for these four guys right here, C, G, and, or C, J, and V. Ecclesiastical Latin, in ecclesiastical Latin, C is hard unless, C is hard as in cat, in cat, or in C, in Kieser, I can't do that. C is hard unless it's in front of these letters, E and I, A, E, these two letters combined, A, E, and Y. And I actually put on the board a, the first verse in the Vulgate, the first verse in the Bible to demonstrate this. Let's look at C in these letters. If I was practicing, or if I was pronouncing this in classical Latin, I would say, in principio creavit Deus, Caelum et teram, or caelum, actually. I keep messing up on this combination right here. Caelum et teram. In ecclesiastical Latin, or in church Latin, notice that the language doesn't stay the same, and that's an important point. It's the same language, different pronunciations, but it's the same language. Keep that in mind. The language doesn't, uh, the language doesn't change, but the pronunciation does. In... Instead of principio, now I'm going to say, because C is in front of an I, principio. In principio, C in front of an R, well, that's not one of our letters that changes the pronunciation of C. So we'll still say creavit, just like in classical. In principio, creavit deus. Celum, we have a C in front of this combination here. Celum et teram. Same rules for G. If G is in front of E, A, E, I, A, E, or Y, then it, it makes the sound J in giant, the English word giant. 
if it's not in front of those letters, it makes the sound g in goat. So for this word right here, which is queen in Latin, in classical Latin, we'd say regina. In ecclesiastical Latin, we'd say regina. The differences are minor. Keep that in mind. We already talked about J. It always says the y sound, y in yuck, or y in yellow. Just quickly, I want to talk about H. H is a, a normal sound in Latin, um, but in classical Latin, in the words, in the word mihi, uh, it'll sometimes be pronounced miki with a with a K sound. So you'll hear that sometimes if you're listening to the uh, Bible in Latin, and you, you hear the word miki. It's mihi, or that's how you would pronounce it in classical Latin, mihi. All right, so V is the last one. V makes either the W sound in classical Latin, weenie, weedy, weeki, or the V sound in ecclesiastical Latin, vini, vidi, and then we have a C in front of an I here, so vini, vidi, vici. So there you go. The differences are minor. I mentioned there's another pronunciation called the English pronunciation, and you're used to that. If you've ever heard of the Roman orator Cicero, that's the English pronunciation where C makes the S sound sometimes. Not always, but it makes the S sound sometimes. So in classical Latin, you would say Cicero. In ecclesiastical Latin, you'd say Cicero. And in the, using the English pronunciation, you would say C Cicero. <laughs> Too many S sounds. Julius Caesar would be Julius Caesar or Julius Caesar, perhaps. And in classical Latin, Julius Caesar. And in ecclesiastical Latin, Julius Caesar. So there you go. Same language, v small variations. And everybody stresses out about these different languages or these different pronunci pronunciations, and they're not that bad. The differences are minor. It's just a handful of letters that make the difference. All right, if you want to learn more about Latin, check out Visual Latin.